there is an enlightenment, where there is a period of enlightenment, it is often, unfortunately, accompanied by something I'd like to term an indictment. And so, uh, from Dominic Hill and the Travis Theatre, a new production that we are co-producing with them, at the Lyceum, of a new play that we've commissioned from Rona Munro about the, the, tragedy, the tragic tale of Janet Horne, who in 1727 became the last woman to be burnt as a witch in Scotland. Imagine the scenes 18 years earlier than the conversations that David Hume and others had in this city. Um, a, complete, a, a more complete contrast to the Enlightenment could not be imagined. And if our point of departure for so much of the inspiration of this year's festival is the 18th century, it is only a point of departure and we are going forward and backwards in time to reveal some of the really interesting contributions that Scottish culture has made, internationally renowned contributions of their time over the ages. We also start this year very provocatively in our opening concert with Judas Maccabeus. Perhaps it takes an Aussie to suggest that this is um, appropriate fare for an Edinburgh festival, because this is not a work that could easily have been performed in Scotland in the late 18th or 19th centuries, because it has uh, Handel's own um, sort of sucking up, and I don't think there's any other word, um, to the Hanoverian kings, um, with um, his own tribute to the butcher of Culloden, um, the Duke of Cumberland, in See the Conquering Hero Comes. The Scottish Chamber Orchestra, the Edinburgh Festival Chorus, um, William Christie, um, will be performing this terrific work. Don't be deceived by its Baroque beauty. There's a kind of political sting in this one. But to show that there are no hard feelings about Handel, and because it is, after all, the 250th anniversary of his death, um, we are performing a number of his works. A concert performance of Rinaldo um, from the Bach Collegium Japan and Masaki Suzuki, marking their festival debut. If we are looking to the 11th century, um, and our point of reference is the 18th, to balance it out a bit, let's look to the 19th and early 20th century, to Great King Street in the New Town, where um, a certain Mr. J.M. Barry took rooms after being an undergraduate at Edinburgh University, and where, um, amongst his very most um, uh, uh, universal um, accomplishments was the story of Peter Pan and the boys from Netherlands. The Peter Pan we are presenting this year, called Peter and Wendy, is a very different offering. For those of you who remember Marble Minds and their extraordinary vision of Doll's House in 2007, this, this is no different. That the Marble Minds treatment on the Peter Pan story um, uh, certainly will inspire us in very different ways. No doubt it will be an extraordinary, compelling vision. No doubt a, a very distinctive, almost surreal vision. It's accompanied by the wonderful music of Johnny Cunningham, performed live by a dance band. We have a wonderful homecoming of sorts in new work and a new project from Michael Clark, who was last seen at the festival 21 years ago. I can't tell you too much about it, which also delights me, because knowing Michael and knowing how refreshing and rebellious he can be, we're in for a real treat. Michael Clark Company at the Playhouse for the first time at a festival in 21 years. We have um, a concert by Jordi Saval of Les, um, Les, um, and Les Concerts des Nations, in which Saval is playing with both fire and water in a performance, dare I say, a complete revamp of the most famous repertoire that Handel ever wrote, the fireworks and, and, um, and, the, and the water music.